Welcome everyone and thanks for watching Fast Track Tutorials. My name is Otis Tumilis and I've been working as a freelance character artist for about three years. Today, I'll be covering a way to wrap rope around an object like I've done here. I did this in 3ds Max, so let's hop into Max. Okay, here's what it looks like. So what we're going to be doing is using planes and booleans to slice a bunch of imprints of this object into those planes and then use those imprints as splines to make a rope and then uh, we're going to be editing those splines to make them look like one long piece of rope instead of just a bunch of loops. So a few words about the base mesh you use to wrap around. Make sure it's not too high poly and it's all kind of more or less quads. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can use an automatic retopology like a Z remesher in ZBrush or a, I think 3ds Max has an auto retopo modifier now. Let's clone this. And we can hide the original. Let's reset XForm just in case and add a shell modifier. Now this outer amount is the radius of the rope you're going to be wanting to tie around. So I want a 5mm rope. So this is a 2.5mm outer amount. And make sure you've got select inner faces ticked. Add an edit poly and you can go into polygon mode and you can see the interfaces are selected. We can just delete them. Now let's add some planes. So just some uh, regular planes that are big enough to cover the cross section of your object. You don't want uh, any length or width, seg width segments. Let's move these into position and give them a bit of rotation. Maybe I want this the other way and I'll just duplicate them. So these are going to be the rings of rope around your mesh. As you can see, they're very quick to place, uh, a lot quicker than uh, going around a mesh with a spline tool and snaps turned on and placing a spline. This is uh, really quick. Okay, now let's select one of these and add a pro boolean to it and set the operation to intersection imprint and let's pick the shelled uh, base mesh we just made and we can go into isolate selection and we can see this is what you want to see a nice imprint onto the plane of your um, base object that you're wrapping so now we can pick the rest of these planes uh, but make sure you change the operation to attach and also when you're picking make sure you've uh, selected reference mode so that you can edit uh, your objects um, after you've added them to the boolean instead of having to extract them to if you want to edit them and then put them back in uh, this is just faster with reference mode so let's add these planes okay and you can see this isn't quite looking right because this needs to be at the bottom of the operation stack Okay, now that's a lot better, but this bottom one might still be an issue once we turn it to edit poly mode. See, it disappears. So what we need to do is go back to our original mesh and uh, edit this uh, area. So uh, let me turn on the bottom plane so I know how much of the mesh I don't need and I can just delete that part because that's not a factor in the boolean and then I'm going to be um, deleting these interfaces we don't really need because the rope wouldn't be going in here and uh, replacing them with just a nice flat plane across basically along where the rope would drape
I'm being really quick and rough here, uh, you would want to take a little bit more care and you know, uh, the cleaner you make it, there will be less cleanup uh, when it comes to the generated splines, but it's not a huge issue. It's actually really quick to clean up spline objects because uh, you're just working with individual vertices and you know you just need to delete them. Uh, so it's not a big deal. And this can just be a huge engon. It doesn't have to be nice quads or anything. So we're done here. We can go back to our Boolean object and hide the rest of these. Okay, this is what we want to see. Now we can add an edit poly. And if you go into edge mode, oh, we're on the wrong edit poly. We want to be on this one, not the bottom one. You could also collapse everything here before you start uh, adding the pro booleans. So this is what you want to see and we can just click create shape but let's mess with the settings uh, we probably want to set it to linear because smooth will give you a bunch of bezier handles on every single point and it's a hassle to deal with them and because we're going for a game resolution where we want to optimize our poly count we don't we won't be using any kind of interpolation so smooth won't really be helping us Uh, these are just artifacts left over from the boolean, very quick to clean up. And we can see our rope. Let's turn on our original skull. This looks a little bit thick. Maybe this is a poorly placed rope. What you can do if you don't like the placement of any of these uh, ropes is go back to your boolean object. Uh, get rid of this edit poly and uh, find whichever plane it is that isn't in the right place. Now you want to do this uh, edit in the sub object level because if you do them outside of the sub object level, they won't show up in the uh, edited boolean. So we can just move this up, and as you can see, the boolean object is uh, moving in real time along with this one so we've moved it up a bit uh, so we can go back here and we can add edit poly again and make shape again okay so as you can see we have our newly updated rope with a different placement. Let's get rid of the old ones so it doesn't confuse us. Clean this one up again. Okay, looks a little bit better. Now uh, let's go into how you link these up to make them look more like a rope and not just a bunch of hoops. All we do is we delete a couple sections and then we connect them up. Now the connect function takes a bit of time to update. Well, sometimes it wants you to move something or uh, change something for it to update in the viewport. Uh, and now let's remember to set our interpolation to zero. This doesn't really change anything when we've set all of our points to corner. But uh, let's do it anyway. Don't be afraid to delete points you don't really need because uh, there's a bunch of optimization too. No automatic or uh, you know largely automated uh, solution is going to be flawless. You're going to have to do some manual edits, but I think it's a lot faster than having to put every single one of these points in. You know, I think it's faster to delete things than it is to um, place them manually. You can also use weld 
to get rid of uh, or to uh, sort of combine points. They're all bunched up together. So it takes a bit of time to smooth things out, make them look uh, more natural. But this looks pretty okay for, you know, this demo. Um, and it's a lot faster than if I had to, if I would have, you know, gone around and drawn this whole spline out. So let's do the same up here. You can also use snaps if you want to move uh, things along further and they're starting to drift off of the surface of your mesh or if you've got a really uneven surface. But if you're using snaps, you're gonna want to use the shelled mesh to snap to and not the uh, original one. What you can do is put this into transparent mode to make things a little more clear. But when it comes to cylinders, you don't really need snaps. You can just move up and down, and this is pretty close to a cylinder shape. Let's move this one in front. Okay. Okay, that looks close enough for now. Maybe this is a little bit thick. I did say I want the, wanted this to be half a centimeter thick. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker because it looks a bit better when you're clipping slightly into your mesh. It sort of makes it look like the rope's being squashed onto the surface and it's not just hovering above it. So uh, over here, maybe what I'll do is show you how I add knots to things like this. Also when you're working, you can use soft selection make things easier and set it to edge distance so it doesn't hop across uh, different ropes. Okay. Moving on to the knot. Um, I won't show you how to model this whole knot uh, it's quite straightforward, but we don't really have time. I will just say uh, the way you do it is uh, you uh, get an image or a diagram of your knot into a scene, you trace it from one point of view, then you go into a third point of view and you move it out in to the sides so it sort of forms a nice 3D knot. And also, when you're making these knots, you want to use smooth corners and not uh, bezier handles because they tend to scale better. Sometimes when you scale bezier handle type vertices, uh, they sort of go crazy. And uh, you'll want to be able to scale your knots if you're going to be using them in a lot of different situations. Uh, that's the best way to have them is to, you know, uh, just have a bunch of them pre-modeled and then you can add them to whatever file or scene you need them in. Uh, just, uh, you know, attach them, paste them in wherever you need them. So we're just moving this one roughly into position. That looks okay. And also I will make these droop down Make them a bit shorter too. And 
and uh, of course we have a corner here that's quite ugly and another one here and just fix them because again we don't want any uh, interpolation on here now of course uh, when you're doing your final pass once you've pretty much got everything finalized when it comes to splines you'll also you know be uh, going through everything and manually editing uh, well not manually editing but just you know cleaning up the uh, actual polygons adding in some loops wherever you need them so it doesn't have to look perfect in spline mode already you will be able to just uh, touch up the polygons as well uh, okay close enough for now let's go back to our main spline and attach this one let's uh, just position a little bit I don't want soft selection right now I want to spend some time manually tweaking the individual vertices making sure these ropes fit in it can be a bit confusing but uh, it's not too bad Okay, I think we need a little bit more space for these two ropes. So I'm just going to select this whole spline and scale it a bit. That's more like it. Now let's move this one out to the front. Maybe we want another point here. Okay, that's starting to look quite good from a bigger distance. Uh, it's important not to stay too zoomed in, because realistically, even this is too close with viewing distance. You know, you're going to be more around, you know, somewhere around here is the closest you're going to get. Of course, we got some sharp corners. You can refine these in spline mode, or you can you know, remember them and come back to them once you've turned everything into polygons as well. I think uh, you get the idea. I'd spend a tiny bit more time refining this if this was a piece of work I was doing. But for now, this is fine. So that's the general workflow here. When you have spots like this you can just uh, delete this whole swave so you get a nice straight line uh, yellow points are end points so you usually want to weld them because they are a break in the spline as you can see now you would go through here and refine everything a bit more get rid of these uh, points like this and uh, you know all of these but uh, I think you guys get the idea now. What I'm going to do is uh, give you some hints on how to do e tiling UVs for this. Because uh, you're probably going to want to use tiling textures for, for uh, objects like this. Uh, this is a tiling texture. It's just uh, one square bit of rope that's tiled over and over. Uh, and the nice thing is this is really quick to do when it comes to a spline because you can just tick generate mapping chords and then go to edit poly or uh, rather unwrap UVW 
and if you open your UV editor you'll see that everything is already nice and straight it's just the wrong scale everything's super stretched out so all you want to do is scale everything vertically until it starts making sense now we're getting nice squares here so this is probably the right scale and here's where you might run into another issue if you've got a really long spline and it extends really far out into the UV coordinates here it goes up to 37 you might start running into issues even here um, so let me show you this example let's uh, check out the UVs here as you can see they go way out for this one way up to you know uh, a thousand UV tiles now that's a bit of an exaggeration uh, you're already gonna start getting some issues just you know 50 tiles out and I'll show you what those issues are now uh, now you won't get these issues usually in uh, the 3ds max viewport or probably even if you're doing uh, offline renders so say in V-Ray if you're rendering you might be fine uh, but when you're in a real-time engine you start getting floating point errors with your UVs if you go really far out into the UV islands which I'm going to show you now so these are the UVs of the one I just showed you last um, so the one where the UV islands go up up to 1000 the UVs are actually still good uh, these issues aren't from like uh, bits of the UV islands uh, you know crossing over each other or anything they're all straight they're all fine but they're so far out that there are floating point errors in the positions of those vertices when they get into Unreal Engine and they start going wrong so you get this stretching and it's even worse if you have a displacement map applied for some reason so you want to avoid this you want to keep your UV islands uh, under, you know, like 25 tiles out. Uh, so a few things you can do is cut your islands up into shorter sections. Also, you can move your islands halfway down. So half of the island is in the positive direction and half of the island is in the negative direction. So let's see the fixed UVs I've got here. Now these look pretty messy because they're all stacked on top of each other to save space. I could stack them all into one island, but uh, I wanted a little bit more clarity. So there's only like three or four stacked into one place here. And as you can see, they only go out by 10 in either direction at the most, or eight actually. So, you know, maybe you want to keep them under 20 tiles long and then move them down so they only stick out 10 tiles in each direction uh, if you want to have perfect, nice tiling UVs. Also, when it comes to UVs, I have a second UV channel which uh, doesn't have any tiling and I've used this to bake out an ambient occlusion map and uh, for some color variation in my Unreal Engine material. So as you can see, uh, there is a, a sort of, you could see the tiling texture and then you could see some color variation that doesn't match up with that tiling. So that's the second UV channel and uh, you know that you can also use ambient occlusion or whatever you like. So um, I think you can find a lot of tutorials on making multiple map channels and also how to use multiple UV channels in uh, environment assets especially. So um, I'm not going to be covering that, but that's uh, another thing you can keep in mind when you're doing uh, details like this. Okay, to wrap things up, I think I'm going to apply this tiling material to the rope we just made just to 
screw the UVs really do tile. So I'll just get this material and drag it onto our spline. Now you can see for some reason it's tiling quite unevenly. Here it's really dense and here it's quite uh, quite wide. So uh, I think I know why that is. That's because we actually took three different uh, lengths of uh, spline and uh, scaled to the scaled them to the same size uh, in the UV editor when actually they should have been scaled to a different size. So you can see uh, we actually have three different objects here. So let's move them out so things are more clear for us. You can use this uh, these values here to move things out by one island or two to make things more clear when you're working and we can scale them down to be about the right size okay that looks close and this one too and these all look a bit long see this is going to depend on the type of tiling texture you're using so I'm going to uh, make them all a bit longer that looks pretty good now another thing you can do to alleviate the length of your UV islands is to uh, use a texture that isn't completely square in this case I've used a square texture let me uh, show it to you quickly So my texture looks like this, and uh, if it's a complete square, that means it will have to tile a bunch of times. Uh, this is probably maybe a bit of a mistake. Maybe you want to tile a texture that's a bit more rectangular. And that way, you won't need to tile it, uh, stretch your islands out so far vertically. Okay, that's all for this one. Thanks for watching Fast Track Tutorials, and goodbye.